So yesterday, yeah. we factored with um, trinomials where our first term was greater than 1. And then um, today, we're going to take that up just a notch. If you go back to when we first started factoring trinomials with grouping, we said that the first thing you need to do is check for a GCF. Now, the problems that we've done so far, if we've checked, they don't have that, okay? The problems we're gonna do today do have a GCF, or a greatest common factor that we need to take out first. So let's look at some of those. supposed to be minus 2y in the middle. So change it to a minus. Okay. So the first thing we always want to do is check to see if all three of our terms have a common factor. It could be just a number, it could be a number and a variable. Do all of these have something in common? A two? Okay. So let's divide a two out of everything, and that two is gonna come and sit up front. So two divided by two is one. So it's just y squared. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I can put a negative y, or a negative 1y is fine. And then 24 divided by 2 is 12. So now we just have to factor this. Factor that trinomial, and that 2 is going to come down and be part of your final answer. But for now, you can kind of just set it aside as long as you remember to bring it down. And this is what I'll do a lot is I'm not going to play with the two right now. I'm going to leave it there. But I drew that arrow down to help remind me to put it as part of my final answer. So this part is what your quiz is on. Can you factor that without my help? Do it. No, just this. Yeah. So, factor by grouping. I'm going to give you a minute to do it. Okay, did we find numbers that multiply to be 12 and add? Three and four and... One of them is going to have to be negative, right? Four and positive three. They have to add to be negative, so that means the larger number has to be negative. So we take those two numbers and we replace that negative one y with those numbers. Just took those two numbers, replaced them right here. Now what? Group them. 
So you have four terms. When you have four terms, you're ready to group. So first two, last two. First two are divisible by y. So let's see, I'm gonna have y times what? y minus four. Second group is divisible by three. My first term's positive, so I want my three to be positive. Three divided by three is one, so that's just a one y. Negative 12 divided by three is negative four. Okay. Both of those have y minus 4. Remember, that's our good news, right? Put that out in front. Divide it out, and what's left behind? Your y plus 3. Reminder arrow needs to be a little, so little longer. And now we're just going to bring that two down right there. That's your final answer. Well, I haven't seen one with x to the third before. But what's my first step? Look for... No, nope, before that, look for GCF. So is there a GCF? Yes. An X. That's going to make it so I can factor it because I only know how to factor things with X squareds. Okay, so divide an X out. X to the third divided by X is X squared. Negative 8x squared divided by x. We basically just take the exponent down one, right? 8x. Here the x's cancel. So we have positive 15. Okay. I didn't do this in the last one. I forgot to write my a, b, and c. But I should do that because I know it helps some of you. And individually, when you get to a point where you don't have to feel you don't have to write those, you can skip that step. But it does help us to keep track of things. So we want two numbers that multiply to positive 15 are A times C. We need phones away, please. and adds to negative 8. What is it? Negative 3 and negative 5. Negative 5 is actually smaller, so I'll put that on the left. Because it's further down the number line. Okay. So I'm going to have x squared minus 5x minus 3x plus 15. Group them. So what are what can I divide out of the first two? X. So I'm going to have X times X minus 5. What can I take out of the second group? 3. And it need, we want to do it in negative 3. If we don't do it negative 3, we won't get that good news. They won't be... It won't be the right terms in the parentheses. So this is going to be x minus 5. I'm going to divide those both out, right? So that comes out front. I ran out of room. And what's left behind? 
x minus 3. Don't forget, what do I have to do with that? Put it in front. Whoops, not a 3 and x. So our solution is x times x minus 5 times x minus 3. Okay, any questions there? Okay. <clears throat> so on your quiz today, you're going to have problems like this that say like x squared minus 8x plus 15. You guys are good with those, right? And then you also are going to have some, I just want to make sure you remember these because it's been a while since we've done them by themselves, that might look like this. Four terms. So what do you do with four terms? It's just, this is starting at that grouping step. So if you have four terms, you just group them. So you don't have to do the x. Because when you have four terms, what it is is that x part has already been done. I don't know if you remember when we did these. We started with the ones with four terms, and then, then we went and found those. Okay? I'm not going to do this one. I mean, we actually already did it. I just pulled it from right here. Okay? So some of the problems are going to start right here. Some of them will start right here. Okay? It's actually the first two are like this. Okay? So, we'll take the quiz. When you're done with the quiz, then um, 